Hello, Tab Nation. It's your boy Tom, and today we're going to be expanding into a new coding language called Play Basic. I only just recently came across this, never really heard of it. Uh, it's been out for quite a while, um, but it's really cool. I thought it was something we could learn. Just do a quick video or two about it if you guys are interested. Definitely hit that like button. It lets me know which videos you guys are interested in. Languages, obviously most of my channels auto hotkeys. But I like to expand my knowledge and hopefully your knowledge just in case you want to expand your horizons. So Play Basics really cool. It's all about code that's used to make two-dimensional games. You know, like those old school like side-scroller games or... Uh, adventure games, that kind of thing. So it's pretty neat. I like this a lot. So let's take a look at their website, which obviously will be in the description below to link to it. Uh, I forget the creator's name on this, uh, but he's a real cool guy. He's very active still, it seems. But yeah, um, you make two games. Let's take a look at the gallery just to give you a little better idea. Uh, so as you see, you know, some people have made games and whatnot, just, you know, there's like an adventure game here, it looks like, kind of, uh, I guess you're a private eye, so maybe clue hunting, I haven't played many of these games yet, um, but they're definitely fun to play, so even if you don't want to learn the language, maybe try some of these games back, uh, out, give them, they have some videos, different clips, let's expand that, so as you see, you know, it's got, you know a lot of colors you know you can do a lot of different things but this is definitely just a basic intro i can expand on it later with different types of stuff but this is kind of your first time thing they have plenty of documentation uh, right here you can see all the different types of things uh, that you can learn very laid out well pretty much i think everything's on here that you could possibly know or need to know uh, but yeah you're going to go up here at the top on the main bar you can see it changes to uh, i guess that's orange download and you're just going to download uh, play basic learning edition there's other ones too that you can get based on what you want but i just downloaded the the learning edition because hey that's what this channel is about you'll get a file on your desktop unzip it install it very easy to do no need to restart your computer at least i didn't have to it just worked so you're going to launch it and this is your IDE. So they have their own IDE. Obviously, if you want, you can, you know, still use Notepad Plus Plus or VS Code, whatever. But this one's built around this language, so it's probably best to stick with this one if you can. And yeah, so when you create a new script, it automatically, this is really cool, I like this. It automatically adds these uh, notes or comments at the top. So you got your project, what you want to call it. So project one, author, you know, we could put... Uh, tab nation keep it you know uh video intro when was it created uh so obviously i wrote this code on uh 2 2023 you can change that if it's not correct and then when was the last time it was edited as you see it was edited today at well at the time of filming this video and it automatically does that which is really cool that it's able to keep track of that without you changing the date by yourself really cool and then here you just put a bunch of minus signs that's just a cool way to organize i do that in all my code basically i use equal signs just to make it a little th thicker but same idea i really like that uh, one thing i want to point out that you're probably all wondering is yes this uh, text font is really small i'm sorry about that uh, as of right now i haven't figured out if i can zoom in i've tried the normal stuff but i can't seem to find a way i don't know if i'm just overlooking it or it just doesn't have that functionality so sorry about that i'll post the code in the comments below or the uh, description uh, just so you can see it if you can't really see very well especially if you're on a phone there's probably no way you can read what i'm showing you but you can follow along with the uh, description so first thing we're going to do is we're just doing a hello world simple script you know that's what you do every time so we're going to name our variable so this one i'm just calling var1 obviously you should probably name it something a little better but this is just an intro video and for a variable you're going to put the dollar sign right here and that's letting it know that this is going to be a string or a word or a sentence you know whatever so we're going to do two, just so we can also see how to combine strings together. So we're doing hello, put it in quotations, just a simple equal sign. So now that variable, variable one, or var one, is now assigned hello. We're doing the exact same thing here, but we're calling it var two, variable two. And we're doing that, but we're saying world, so hello world. Well, we need those together, so let's combine them. 
So we're going to create a new variable called whole dollar sign, and we're going to do equals. And then we're going to state what we're going to be combining. So we want variable one dollar sign to be first plus, and then we're just going to put quotations here that are blank. This is where you could say something like hello from uh, earth or something. You know, this is where you could add something that's not a variable if you wanted to with uh, inside quotations plus and then variable two dollar sign. So now this variable whole is assigned hello world as just one string versus two variables. We wanna display it. So we're doing, you know, the old school print. You know, if you're in auto hockey, it's the same thing as send, uh, but here they're using print. You know, that's what I always learned is print from <laughs> when I learned basic as a kid. And what do we wanna print? We wanna print that variable. Once again, make sure it knows that that's what it is, dollar sign. So that's the first part. That's our very simple hello world. But we're going to take it one step uh, farther just so you can learn a little extra. Um, so now we want to do some math here. So we're doing score equals one. Now notice there's no dollar sign here. That's because this is a number versus like a string. So it's an integer. Level up equals five. So these two variables are now assigned those numbers, one and five. We're going to do repeat. Repeat is the same as a loop. Uh, where it's just going to repeat until a certain conditions met. There's different types of loops, repeats, uh, continues, stuff like that. That could be a later video if you guys are still interested, where I'll dive into all the different types of loops and you know situations of how to exit or you know if statements inside of a loop, that kind of thing, nesting. So yeah, let me know exactly what route you guys would be interested. Obviously, this would have a very heavy graphic portion of a video possibly because you know you need your sp sprites you know backgrounds all that i can do a video too let me know in the comments below obviously so i know which route you guys want to take so we're going to print our score so scores can start at one so it's going to print a one after hello world it's going to print a one but then we're going to do some math here we're going to do score so new variable or we're using the same variable as up here sorry equals score plus level up so now score, instead of being one, it's gonna add five, now it's six. It's gonna add another five, another five. It's just gonna keep looping, adding five. Well, we need a way to exit. We're doing sync here. I honestly have had troubles understanding sync. I can't find any documentation on that. Once I figure out that more, I'll put that in the comments, but you do need to put sync in certain places. Uh, but I was having some issues figuring 100% out how to phrase what this does. Uh, but it's basically kind of like doing an update to the the prompt that we're going to see here in a little bit. So we're going to do until, and that's basically like saying keep looping until something meets, you know, whatever. So we're going to say when score equals 101, stop the loop. We're done. Break out of it. So then what it's going to do is going to jump out. It's going to print all done. So we know it's done. And then we're going to do wait, no key, sync, wait key. And what this is doing is it's saying that it's not going to do anything under here or close out of the prompt until we press a key on our keyboard. Now, I'm curious. I didn't even think about testing this. If it's going to use a mouse click, also if it'll recognize it, we'll test that out and find out together, I guess. Uh, but I know on a keyboard, it's what it's waiting for is a button press. So, yeah, that super simple code. You know, it's pretty standard to a lot of different languages out there, especially with like the print part, how variables work. So, you know, even coming from auto hotkeys, it's just using different words. Instead of using loop, you're using repeat here. It, pretty easy to get the idea. And then for variables, you're just kind of defining what kind of variable it is. You know, so like we're using the dollar sign here versus here. We don't even need that. We're just saying the actual variable equals a number. So it's pretty easy to transfer this knowledge from, you know, other languages into here and just kind of remembering what the different wording is. So in the IDE here, we have right here, we have um, our debug mode run. Um, and then we have our regular run, which also has a hotkey of F5. We're just going to do the run one. So I'm going to go ahead and press run. We're going to get our prompt here. And you see how fast that was? It honestly took longer for this prompt to open than the code to actually run, which is great. It means your code's going to be great. So as you see here, we got hello world 
And then here's where I was saying with that repeat where it's adding 5, so 1, 6, 11, 16, etc., etc. But then we get down here to 96. 96 plus 5 equals 101. So this until score 101 hits means, okay, we're done. Then we get that print all done. And let's click with our mouse and see if that actually registers as a key weight. It does not. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push the T button on my keyboard. And as you see, program's done. There's nothing left to do. So it exits out of the uh, command uh, prompt kind of thing there. Now, one thing also I want to point out before I finish this video is saving. Um, when you go to save, we'll, we'll do save as because this is already saved. Choose where you want to save it. Uh, and just so you know, it automatically will choose the save as type where AHK, you do need to type in here .ahk, but with this language, it's automatically going to do it with the IDE, and the uh, code for that is .pbp, so play basic, I don't know what the P stands for, program, probably, I would assume, didn't really see that, um, but hey, if you guys know more about it than I do, left, let me know in the comments below, and like I said, let me know what you guys want to learn on this and what not, and yeah, I can always dive deeper into, you know, different types of code that you can use, loops, whatever, graphics. Uh, I can talk more about the IDE and all the features it has. You know, you guys let me know. This These videos are for you, obviously. And as always, please hit that subscribe button. Always doing automation type of stuff, usually. Sometimes I branch out, obviously, into other languages and types of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate it. Hit that like button so I know you like this video and want to see more. And I will see you all on the next one. Bye.